and they spent for that heroin slightly in excess of $91,000. That's direct money paid for the, the narcotics. And of course, there were purchasing agents involved and surveilling agents and court time and everything else. But with that monstrous effort, they removed from the streets of New York 4.97 pounds of heroin of the lowest street quality. In other words, six to eight to maybe 10% pure. Uh, eight ounces, if you're talking just straight heroin, about eight ounces of the almost five pounds was really heroin. And it was our uh, judgment, and it still is our judgment, that that kind of law enforcement doesn't make any sense. Those were purchases from addict sellers in the main, and were making, obviously, with all that effort, no impact on the heroin traffic. Uh, based upon the, the, uh, our investigation and the sworn testimony of a great number of witnesses given at the public hearing and also a private hearing testimony of many witnesses, we found that police corruption in the enforcement of the narcotics laws in New York City existed to a significant degree and was certainly not limited to isolated cases. In fact, we found patterns of corruption in this area. Maybe hard, I think it's hard to believe that police officers are protective of each other where narcotics traffic is being fostered by corruption, but the evidence before us uh, really impelled no other reasonable conclusion. Obviously had a, a devastating impact on the effectiveness of the enforcement. And we found this from talking to police officers, uh, both on the record and off the record, and talking to people in communities, representative community groups, and others. We found that it, what it had done, among the things it had done, was to create a terrible climate of distrust of all police engaged in the enforcement of the narcotics laws. And uh, obviously, narcotics enforcement work, uh, maybe more than any you can think of, involves the use of informers, and it involves the cooperation of the public to a large degree. And we found very strong evidence to establish that because of the corruption of some, the public was not about to cooperate with any police officers. So it was our conclusion, among other things, that the narcotics corruption which did exist was having an extremely devastating effect, as I said, on all narcotics enforcement because you simply were not getting informer cooperation to the extent needed and you were not getting citizen cooperation to the extent needed.